Hi, I'm Pat North, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about systems engineering. And systems engineering for big imaging systems is the formal engineering discipline that you add to help build, operate, and then shut down a very big, complex system. And it helps add detail at the granular level to help orchestrate all of these moving parts. So systems engineering starts with the concept of a life cycle. So every system is going to go through the same types of phases. You have your concept, you've got your design, build, integrate, initialize, operate, and then end of life. And every system is going to go through this general life cycle. And a system engineer is going to manage all of these life cycle transitions through two things. You've got you've got your system requirements over here and you've got your validation and verification over here. And those are the two primary tools of a systems engineer. You're going to manage all of these different transitions using these system requirements and the validation and verification of them. And the way you're going to do that is through what's called the system V. So the idea with the system V, you've got high and low levels of detail. And your high level details, that's going to be your initial concept. And as you drill down, you're going to have your system You've got your system, your subsystem, and your components. And you're going to take all of these system requirements. So I want my imaging system to be able to capture images this quickly on this type of targets this often. And in order to do that, you're going to define the high level system requirements. And then you're going to say, all right, in order to meet those requirements, I'm going to take each of those and I'm going to break them down into the subsystems. And I'm going to say, I need a payload that's this capable of collecting these system level requirements. I'm going to need a power system that's this capable. I'm going to need a comm system. I'm going to need a ground station this capable. And each one of those will have its own set of requirements. But then in addition, you're going to say, well, in order for the payload to be able to meet those requirements, I'm going to need a series of components. I'm going to need this optomechanical design, and I'm going to need a lens this big, and I'm going to need a focal plane that's this capable, and I'm going to need a data processing unit that's this fast. So each of those requirements will then be drilled down into the component level. And a good system engineer will help you write those requirements and distribute those out. And then once you've got those built, you're going to then start integrating. And then you're going to operate the entire system. So as you go down, you're going to build the system, and then you're going to integrate those pieces together, and then you're going to go into operations. And as you do that, you're going to use your, test and your testing to validate and verify that each of those system requirements are met. So each of those subsystem requirements are met. So as you're moving back up the V on the other side, you're verifying that, yep, all those validation and verification say that it works the way it's supposed to, and I can move on to the next step. And if they don't, you can then rebalance things. And that's the role of a good system engineer or a good systems integrator. You're constantly doing this balancing act where you've always got your requirements on here but you've got your budget over there. And that budget can be a lot of different things. That budget can be money, it could be power, it could be weight, it could be space, it could be time. And each one of these requirements, if you can't quite meet the weight requirement in one place, a good system engineer is going to be a generalist and they're going to understand how all of these pieces work together so they can say, well, in order to meet this requirement, what can I borrow from some of the other subsystems? Maybe I can take a little bit of weight off of this, or maybe I can add a little bit more power over here if I change this into a trade study and move things around. So the idea is to move through this entire 
life cycle, you're going to follow this system V using these systems requirements and validation verification practices and balance the budget against the requirements throughout the entire process. And that's all I had to say about that. Thanks very much for watching.